That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. In today's segment, what I want to speak on is critical thinking and doubt. I want to encourage all of you to doubt. We're not doubting enough. We're not flexing that doubt muscle. And tyranny prospers when you stop critically thinking. And then once you critically think and you start to discover things and start to peel away the truth, then you must have the courage to act on that. But it must start with doubt. You have to doubt. If you're critically thinking, doubt is a huge part of that process. And that's something that in the very beginning, you know, early 2020, I was doubting, right? I was like, hey, you know, you, you seem to be more, more, it seems to be more of a priority for you to, to, to make me afraid than it is to actually inform me. And then when you started to tell me what, what I should know and what I should know and who I should listen to and who I shouldn't listen to, when they're all experts and this is supposed to be novel, right? Which means new, shouldn't we be pulling out all the stops, listening to every expert in the field? No, you're trying to make me walk one path. And I'm like, well, why? So I began to doubt. And I remember even uh, in, in that year, I had somebody unfriend me right after telling me that I'm just trying to sow doubt. And I was like, yes, you're, you're getting it now. Yes, I want you to think for yourself. Why are you following corporations that have been historically corrupt? You think that they're all of a sudden just now altruistic? Maybe it's the billions of dollars of profit that they see, right? Go look up how many new pharmaceutical billionaires were created in the last couple of years. You, that didn't have any thing to do with it at all, huh? They just were for the people, even though their track record would say. So my thing was just doubt, because there's a lot of things that we don't know, right? There are a lot of things that I can't say definitively, yes, I know that's, that to be true, but I can look at what's most probable based on history and based on, on the evidence that I have in front of me. I can go, is it, is it more probable that these pharmaceutical companies have my best interest at heart and they're really trying to save me and my family based on their track record? based on, on their actions even in real time today. Is, is that more probable or is it more probable that they're just money grubbing monsters who they don't care how many bodies they put in the ground as long as they can buy another jet? <laughs> Which is more probable? Is it more probable that, that my government actually has my best interest at heart, even looking at the track record historically, looking at the Department of Health, looking at the CDC, looking at the FDA, looking at OSHA, looking at Department of Education, looking at Department of Labor, like go on and on and on. Is it, is it more probable that, that they have my best, my best interest at heart and have always? Or is it more probable that the government has its own agenda and all it cares about is keeping that machine alive and keeping the status quo so that the people that profit off that status quo continue to profit off that status quo and continue to hold the power that they have? which is more probable. So all I'm asking you to do is critically think in doubt. And this is something that, that is a prime example because this is something that is happening right now. So with regard to, to these train derailments, right? So between train derailments and overturned trucks, and this is all like hazardous materials too, right? So all of them involve hazardous materials. So we have train derailments, we have factory explosions, and we have an overturned truck everywhere from Ohio to Michigan to Tucson to South Carolina to Texas. Now, all within the same month. Does that seem probable to you that we would have all of those things happen, that we would even have multiple train derailments all centered around hazardous waste? Does that seem like probable to you, right? Is that, does, does it? And then you throw in the factories. I believe there's two now. One was plastics, and I think one was like a metal factory. Explosions. And then we have an overturned truck. I think that was in Tucson, if I'm not mistaken. Once again, hazardous materials. What's, what are the odds? That's all I'm asking you to do. Critically think, what are the odds that all of this is happening in one month? Right? And then the person that's supposed to be in charge of transportation, who's, just, who's yet another diversity hire, just, just like Kamala Harris is a diversity hire. She's a token. You understand that she's not qualified for her job because she didn't qualify for the job. She was just born with brown skin and, and born a woman. 
And I know what the definition of that is. <laughs> Unfortunately for all you crazy leftists out there, that's why she has a job. And the same, the same thing with the press secretary. She was born a woman and she was born with darker skin and then she chooses to, to sleep with women. So she's another diversity hire. And I think it's the same thing with the Supreme Court justice. She's just another diversity hire. Oh, once again, born a woman and born with darker skin. <gasps> wow, you see a pattern? And then we look at, at Buttigieg. Yes, born a male, but he loves men. So there you go. Not because he's qualified for it, because that doesn't matter. Color of skin, sexual preference, gender, none of that stuff should matter. What should matter is, are you the best person for the job? Because your job actually affects American lives. So we need you to be on your game. We need you to be the top in your field. And we need you to have a track record of it. So we need to be able to look at your employment history and go, yes, yes, you are definitely the person that we need to ensure that all this runs properly so that we don't have train derailments, or if we do happen to have something like that happen, now granted, it shouldn't be multiple in the same month, that just doesn't make any sense, that's not probable to me, but let's say that you do have one and it's involved hazardous materials, that you would have the qualifications to jump in there when we really need you. But I don't think that he does because he's not handling this well at all. And this is a, an excellent article from Front Page Magazine that just really details it out, how he's avoiding, this is all about Ohio, this isn't even about the other train derailments, but he's avoiding even going down there and showing up, much like the border and our, the former vice president, Chinatown Joe. Do you see the pattern? Do you see the pattern in behavior? When, when a particular issue isn't advantageous for what they want, or if it's going to if it's going to be an impediment to what they want, they just avoid it. They just avoid it with all these excuses. He's, he's the transportation secretary. This is, this is literally his job. And he hasn't even gone to talk to the people. And let alone the fact that we're not sending aid and even, even doing what the government is supposed to actually do. Like I believe in limited government, this is an actual occurrence where this is something that they actually should be doing. Is, is going and providing aid when you have a hazard and, and, and a tragedy on this scale, that's exactly when, when the government's supposed to jump in. But I guess there's not enough money to go around and we'd rather send it to Ukraine. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. I'm, I'm on a limited budget, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay for my neighbor's kids to eat and let my kids not eat. That doesn't make any sense. But you guys elected you know, a traitor to our country. So, I mean, what do you expect? And then of course he's doing all these diversity hires of people that aren't qualified. Like you can't find diversity people who are actually qualified for the job. Like wouldn't, I, cause then it wouldn't matter. Like it shouldn't matter anyway. But if you're gonna do affirmative action, like make sure that they at least are qualified for the job. I mean, doesn't that make sense? Right, because like I said, these jobs affect American lives, but he hasn't even shown up. And I don't even know what his statements are on the other train derailments. Where is he, where is he at? The person who's, it is his job to take care of this is MIA. And when he is offering comments, they're, they're not even answers. They're not solutions. So you can read through this article. It's, it, it really details it out really, really well, the people involved. And then of course he tried to pass the buck to Trump and that was shot down. So. My thing is, what's, what's more probable in this situation? Because you'd have to believe that either he's incredibly inept or this is a part of a particular plan, right? I'm just, just critically thinking. Either he's incredibly inept or this is done on purpose. Same thing with the border. Either, either our, our current president, Chinatown Joe, is incredibly inept or it was done on purpose, right? Those are the only two choices. And, and under both scenarios, they shouldn't be in the positions that they are. So if they're this inept, they shouldn't have that job. And if they're doing it on purpose, then they're enemies to the state and, and, and the American people. And once again, they shouldn't have the job and they should actually be thrown into a cage never to be seen or heard from again. <laughs> but once again, what's, what's most probable? That's all I'm asking you guys to do, just critically think. 
what, what do you think is most probable? That all these derailments are just coincidence? All in the same month, all surrounding hazardous materials? That these factories blowing up in the same month that we had multiple derailments? Just coincidence? And then we have an overturned truck? Also hazardous materials? <laughs> that is just coincidence? So if you think that's a coincidence, then, then you probably think that, 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 this, that this was a coincidence as well. Here, check this out. So this is last year, okay? This is last year. So these are all food plant locations that have been destroyed, okay? Now, this is from Friday, August 9th of 2019, all the way to Monday, April 18th of 2022. Now, I want you to see, in 2019, we had Tyson Food Incorporated, a fire that was in Kansas. And then we didn't have anything else according to this list until 2021, where we had a Delhi Star meat plant. That was a fire. And so in 2021, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six in 2021 alone. Okay, we had one in 2019. And then two years later, we have six. One, two, three, four, five, and six, all fires. Then January 1st of 2022, January 1st, from January 1st to April, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all in one year, all within the first four months of 2022. All of them are fires or explosions. And this only has uh, the one, there's an airplane crash on April 13th, but there were actually two. There were two that were taken out by airplane crashes. Now, if nothing else, if nothing else, the escalation alone, you'd have to go, okay, well, wait a minute. Why are we not at least talking about this? These are all in multiple places, different states, like completely different states. I see California, I see New Hampshire, I see Indiana, Arkansas, Oregon, Wisconsin. I, they're all in Washington, Louisiana. So if you're investigating, when do you look for a common thread? And since these are all centered around food and they're all fires, and then two of them, I don't know where the second one is on this list, but two of them had airplanes crash into them. Two of them had airplanes crash into them. And we're not even talking about, okay, well, maybe we need to look at the way these factories are built. <laughs> like, is it that? Is it shoddy? Is it shoddy build? Do they need to be upgraded? Is it an electrical issue? <laughs> are these factories, you know, are they, are they just not inspected properly? Right, we're supposed to have this government regulation making sure this stuff is working right. Are they not doing their job? So once again, it comes down to my two, the two things that, that, could, that it can only be. That all these people are inept or it's done on purpose. And that's further compounded by the fact that I didn't see an investigation going on. I didn't even see our mainstream media, even that, even that, you know, like this wasn't even a priority for them. I didn't see them that interested in even pulling on that string to see, hey, how come in less than four months we have all of these food plant fires and explosions? Food is pretty important. Matter of fact, it's a really, really important resource, don't you think? It's, it's, it's up there, it's the top three. Of the top three, I'd probably say it's number one. It's number one, because if you don't, if you don't have food, it doesn't matter if you have shelter and safety. <laughs> we can't live without food. So I say it's actually number one. Right. And then, of course, there's other theories when you throw in what, you know, what Bill Gates and BlackRock and what they're doing with the farmland and all that kind of stuff in the farmland being over water sources and trying to private, you know, possibly trying to privatize water. I mean, yeah, we can pull on that string. But once again, I don't have definitives, but take in all the information and critically think. That's all I'm asking you to do. Take in the information and then critically think. Does that seem probable to you? That we would have that many food plants blow up, or just, let's just say just destroyed. And does it seem probable that two of them would have airplanes flown into them? Same thing with train derailments, all in the same month, multiple train derailments, all around hazardous materials. I'm just saying, critically think, that's it. Just doubt. Doubt everything, doubt me, right? Doubt even me. I won't take it personally because I actually respect your, your, your sovereignty. I respect 
freedom. I respect liberty. And you have to doubt everything, especially when you see stuff like this right in front of you. Anyway, that's all I want to say. And once again, they want you walking in the dark, not doubting anything. They just want you just, just to be just a loyal robot. Just Man, if we were AI, then you know they would program us just to be slaves. You know that, right? They want you walking in the dark, and I'm over here trying to help you to turn on that light. You guys be well.